it's all right. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the, uh, oh my gosh, what meeting is this? The GOL meeting of September 5th. It is 6, 6.31. I'm going to call the meeting to order and check in to make sure um, uh, everyone can hear and be heard. I'm going to start with Lynn Griesmer. Present. Uh, Pat DeAngelis. Present. George Ryan. I'm present. Excellent. And we have a special guest today. Uh, and he signed on at the exact perfect time. Hello, Chief Ting. Can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? All right. Yes, we can. Thank you. We have one quick item um, before we get to you, if that's okay. We just need to figure sure. out our, our next meeting. So feel free to step away for three-ish minutes and we'll be we'll be right with you. Or you can watch, that's fine too. Um, so before we get to that, I'm going to start by seeing if we have any public comment. Um, I know Councillor Rooney has joined us for our later section, but if she'd like to make public comment, uh, she can raise her hand. Public comment is an opportunity for folks to speak. We'll allow up to three minutes. And if you'd like to make public comment, you can raise your hand. Okay. All right, so um, actually, why don't we take care of this? Well, we're, we're gonna switch just because we do have both people here. But um, after we talk about the nuisance bylaw, we are going to go, uh, we're gonna talk about our next meeting date, which conflicts with the block party. We're gonna see if folks would like to cancel or move that. So um, be prepared to think about that, uh, mull that in the back of your mind while you're, uh, while you're attentively talking through our nuisance bylaw. All right. So we have in front of us, um, in, your, in your, I emailed everybody and it should have been in the packet, a couple of different documents um, regarding the nuisance bylaw. So I'm gonna bring Pam Rooney into the room to speak with us. And actually Pam can be in the room because with Councillor Ete not here, we do not have a quorum of CRC. Um, so there's, we always would rather Councillor Ete be here, but that is a silver lining there. Um, all right, so our uh, Councillor Rooney is going to be joining us as the chair of CRC. And um, as a reminder, we are looking at the nuisance bylaw to determine clarity, consistency, and actionability. Chief Ting is here because uh, as one of the enforcement agencies is the, are the police officers. And so we wanted to confirm with him the actionability of this. Um, and some of the questions that we had might pertain to other items that uh, APD already talks about, for example, when they have their registration for parties. Um, so we're going to start, Pam, with you. If you'd like to give us an overview of what CRC discussed, uh, as a reminder, this had come to GOL. Um, when legal review came back, there were lots of questions that GOL felt CRC was more equipped to handle. So um, CRC took another go at it. Pam, thanks so much for taking time out of your Thursday. And would you like to give us an overview of what CRC talked about and also make sure we can hear you? Oh, and you're muted, so we can't hear you yet. Uh, Councilor Ryan, do you have a question before Pam starts? If you don't mind, just a quick question as to what of the documents you have in the packet might be the best to have open um, during this discussion. Um, maybe if you could just help me with that. Um, we have three, and I just, which would be the one that has uh, essentially uh, the CRC input based on the KP law comments, is that, uh, yeah. Um, I am personally, I have the combined version up so that I can see what the initial comments were and then see the version that CRC sent us. Okay. Um, right. That would be my recommendation. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, Pam, hi, how are you? Thank, thank you, good night, good evening. Uh, that actually answers what, one of my questions and I was going to ask if you wanted me to step through the July 9 version that CRC produced as a clean copy or if you wanted me to actually go through the 523-24 version which was, which was GOL's review with all of the input from GOL and, and town council. Not town council, town KP law. KP law. Um, do other members of GOL have a preference between those two options that Pam laid out? And my only my only consideration is that 
if we went through the the version that came from GOL for review, I can address how we changed those multiple comments. I think I can do it from our clean version because I've cross-referenced. Um, but whatever is easiest for you all to understand if and when changes were made and why. I think the first option of, of talking through the questions that we had left okay. remaining, um, if that's okay. Um, okay. And if you'd like to share screen, you can, otherwise I can pull that. Um, um, it'd be better for you to share it. Yeah. All right, give me one moment to just pull that up. So that, that is your 523.24 version. Yep. Sorry, a word has been going really slow and keeps lagging. All right. So quick, quick background for, I guess it's simply George who was not on the GOL um, when this- I'm was, not either. And Lynn, thank you. Um, I'm, so, I'm, on, I'm on GOL, I'm not on CRC. Right. The, the, the update of 3.26 nuisance uh, by law came out as as sort of a byproduct of our review of the rental registration bylaw. And working very closely with Chief Ting, uh, particularly on this one, we have upgraded it. And the the important point, which may not concern you um, as far as GOL's duties concern, um, is that the the items that we just wanted to keep in mind are that this document does not differentiate between rented or owner occupied homes. Uh, it clarifies owner manager responsibilities on a third violation. It identifies a notification and correction process, which the current bylaw does not. Places violation lists on the town website includes activities deemed violation of state law, which is possession and underage drinking, violations of zoning bylaw, things like excessive lighting and parking, and general bylaws, including noise, roadwalk, sidewalk obstruction, littering, and refuse collection. So the goal is not here to penalize, but to just correct actions that disturb the quiet enjoyment of, of folks and their, and their homes. So that's kind of the background of, of how that started. Um, if we go through the very first, the very first question that was raised is what is a what is a gathering? This gathering is vibr is verbatim from our current bylaw, and it was seen as um, a pretty well understood concept. It's, it's not necessary to worry about it until it becomes an unreasonable interference with people's quiet enjoyment of their home. So we, we kept this particular uh, definition in. Can I ask a question, Pam? Sure. Um, this is actually a question. I, I'm not gonna see, I'm not gonna see hands because I'm looking, so just yell. Okay, so uh, Chief Ting, this, my question is for you as to whether or not we have any sort of definition of this phrase in any, if, if APD has any definition for this, if there's just for kind of the consistency's sake, if, if any of these, but specifically that one, has any sort of definition elsewhere? We do not. Know. No, okay. we do not. And we've been utilizing the uh, this definition from our previous nuisance bylaw, so that, okay. that is consistent. Great, thank you. Sorry, uh, Councilor Ryan, no, that's fine. So the comment from KP Law was that you should, um, or they suggested, or that you might wish to uh, define the number of people. And um, my I guess CRC just thought that they didn't wish to do that. No, it was based exactly on Chief Ting's response that we have been dealing with this definition. We, we as a town, and especially the APD, understands what a what a gathering is, what a party, uh, a crowd, or an event is that we did really didn't need further definition. Thank you, KP Law. <laughs> didn't no, want that, to that's here. that's all. That's yeah. I just again realized from my perspective, we get the KP Law comments, yep. and so what I would like to understand is in those cases where you accepted their changes, mm -hmm. why you did, or in those cases where you didn't, why you didn't, or if you added anything new. Be, right. uh, once you saw, saw KP Law. So here, the answer is 
you said we're happy with this definition. We checked with the chief and we're not going to get into the question of how many constitutes a gathering. Thank you. Okay, good. I, di I didn't have the, uh, I don't have my reading glasses on. I wasn't reading KP Law's exact comment. Um, item number okay. two is an infraction and it was, it was, that was also highlighted. Uh, we used we used infraction and violation interchangeably throughout the document. We have completely deleted the use of the word infraction, and there are many instances where changes were made to replace infraction with violation, and that happens yep. throughout. Oh, sorry. I'm actually going to change the document that I'm sharing because the, the combined version, we can see your changes, and I think that might be more helpful for folks to um, look at if that's okay, because you're saying it out loud, which is really helpful, but we can also then see the um, both the questions we asked and the updates that you made. Um, okay, sorry, continue, please. So you check out infraction. And, and, Thank you. and then for reference, the clean version that uh, CRC generated on July 9 is the clean version of this with these changes made. Yes. Okay, moving down to uh, let's see, we're still in definitions. Number seven, questions were raised about um, questions were raised about a substantial disturbance of the enjoyment of private public property. And we have we have corrected that based on this um, based on this uh, review to let's see, where am I now? Um, Public nuisance is now considered, the definition is an unreasonable interference with a right common to the general public, such as a condition dangerous to health, offensive to community moral standards, or that otherwise threatens the general welfare of a neighborhood or the town in general and includes, but is not limited to, activities that could be deemed violation of state and local laws and local regulations, and as further defined in section C.2 of this bylaw. And that was a direct response to uh, comments by GOL and I think KP Law that we did include uh, wordage from Boston. And we also used the words unreasonable interference as a, as a, um, a recommendation from Chief Ting uh, as that was simply more appropriate generally. You also, Pam, I just want to bump up for a second. You also added in the definition for occupant, which I think was something that yes. we um, we had mentioned in that in the thing too. So I just wanted to make sure GOL members saw that that was added in. Thank you. Yes. Okay, carry on. Okay. Um, I think that was it for that. Now we're in C. I have my two versions going back and forth to make sure I got. Uh, number no, you're good. That's why I did this weird combo thing because I was trying to look at everything at the same time. Okay, two C two A one Mass General Laws. It was recommended that we in fact strike the Mass General Law references, and so we did. We did leave them for the underage person drinking with their parents, MGL chapter 138, I believe. Yeah, we left that one in. I don't exactly um, remember why we left that one in and not the first one, but it was it was felt that the the police department operates with these with these mass general laws all the time. We shouldn't be the, the the people perpetrating a violation aren't aren't as concerned about the state laws. That's a bad way to say it. Um, anyway, does anyone have a question about why we dropped the references? I wondered whether or not, frankly, you just didn't remember to do it there. No, nope. it seems inconsistent. <laughs> it so just seems could, inconsistent. Sure, we could we can put it back in. I, I don't actually remember why we decided to take it out. 
The, are you talking about this first one or the second one? Yeah, the first one. The first one, I think, was because I was, uh, this section of MGL was not called disorderly conduct. Um, there was only a reference to disorderly persons, but not, the words disorderly conduct didn't appear in that, the reference mm -hmm. section of MGL. Um, that was something I think that came up at GOL. And so I don't know that we were necessarily saying strike it. Uh, I, I think it was more of just, is this the correct section? Um, because it didn't line up with what the, the law was called. I can look it up really quickly if folks would like that. I, I would look to Chief Ting, perhaps he can, he can direct us. So that term is, is, is pretty interchangeable. Disorderly conduct is relative to disorderly persons. So really, there's really no difference um, in that terminology. So in the court systems, we use that terminology quite frequently, disorderly conduct, and that's the correct MGL for that. Okay, so it's consistent with prior use of this MGL. Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you for clarifying that. I don't know why this one was stronger. One of the possibilities could be that we want to make sure that other laws may come in that add to the definition the definition of these, or they references may change over time. So. Anything that we leave in a bylaw that l depends on another uh, reference, we always want to make sure we don't have to come back and change the bylaw if the law change. Do people feel strongly about referencing these? Well, I just out? yeah, I just point out that they're they're all through this. Um, there are a number of MGL references that appear. Mm -hmm. um, there's also references to uh, our bylaws, um, and uh, our bylaw numbering can change. Um, I don't, you know, uh, I, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know what to say. I, it would it help create an inconsistency. That. That's for sure. Yeah, I think Lynn, you probably hit it on the head. We don't have the ability to affect um, adjustments of state law, but but the zoning and general bylaws that are local and locally controlled, we can manage fairly easily. Also. Um, someone being a property manager or whatever um, actually has the opportunity looking at this bylaw to go see our the sites for all of these potential violations. And I think um, CRC felt that it was important to keep those in because of that fact. Also because we could rather easily update something because it's in our control. Yeah. Does Thank anyone you. Um well, if you're going to have MGL references and they are accurate, and apparently the one in, in 1A is accurate, then mm -hmm. it seems to me, unless you have a reason for why you want to take it out, we probably should leave it in. Do, I would argue, I, I would, I'm going to say everybody's got to start raising their hands again. So, okay, just, if you're, as long as you're it. monitoring, thank you. I am monitoring, absolutely. Um, and I'm going to just, my comment initially was going to be because we do this throughout all of our bylaws, we reference specific MGL chapters. I argue that for consistency's sake, it is better to include this here. And when state legislation changes, when you look it up, it references what the old legislation was. I don't believe that it's gonna lead people down a confusing rabbit hole. Um, and I think for consistency, we should, we should keep it. Lynn? Then if you're going to do that, you're going to keep the one for disorderly conduct in, but you're going to have to put a IG the statement and what the by what that law actually is is called. Because the reason it was struck was because it's not called disorderly conduct. Okay. Hey, now, I have you... no problem with that, but I think we need to either consistently leave them in or consistently leave them out. That's okay. Our job. GOL can GOL can figure out what to um, add in there. Thank you, Pam. Will you will you decide later or will you decide now? We'll decide later. I think we're going to go through this line by line. We don't want to. You're welcome to stick around for that part, but you don't. That, then to. I'm going to then I'm going to put a question mark. So that's fine. okay. Um, and um, Lynn, I just made you co-host because I just got a notification that my internet was unstable. So just in case something goes wrong, someone else the meeting doesn't close. FYI. 
Did you? Uh, okay, Lynn, thank you. Yeah. Do you have another question, Lynn? Or okay. Sorry. Okay. All right, Pam, go so ahead. moving moving into the into into two and three, those are local bylaws, and they are less well known, less less um, familiar to, as I said, the property managers. We felt it was important to include those. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yes. Who did this nice job of of doing the the compare documents or the consolidated documents? This is really great. That was me. I thought that was it was great. helpful. Yeah. I should have used your version. Um, okay, so 4B. Is that 4B? It's the last one. So. Um, we consolidated actually B and C into one, into one statement. Mm -hmm. And those were the those were the chief of police's words. Uh, and that's that um these are things that might a public nuisance includes, but is not limited to, uh, B is gatherings that cause uh, unreasonable disturbance. And that was felt to be a much better um, statement than listing out, you know, public urination and all the other things that, why would we list just those few when the whole list above is a nuisance? Agree. I'm All sorry. Right. I, keep, I keep shaking my hand. My hand has completely cramped up. I cannot. Oh no! I cannot make my fingers move independently. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Okay, let's see. We are now down to uh, D. Oh. And D. So you're changing fraction. I think that was just, yeah, changing infraction to violation. Yes. So we're throughout, we have changed infraction to violation. Uh, e, persons uh, persons liable. Uh, someone asked, uh, does the, does the um, property manager get notified on the first and second violation? And the answer is yes. I just wanted to clarify that. It is not just on the third violation. Um, so per GOL, we removed occupants from a property receiving the first or second violation, someone who is liable. We did re we took that advice from you and we removed occupants. So it is the person who organized or sponsored and the person's engaging in activity. And I think chief of police can, can confirm that, um, we can account for that. It is it is actionable um, that persons engaging in an activity can be can be cited, can be ticketed. Yeah, that's correct. So you, I'm sorry, you removed the word occupants for a property. Okay. Yeah, I think that our issue was not not the use of the term occupants, but that it didn't have a definition in the definition section. Right. And I, if I recall, it was that an occupant could be an occupant of an apartment complex. And given the definition of property, we stated that a property was the land and all of the buildings on it. So that okay. an occupant could be a thousand people. Thank you. Um, okay, let's see. Um, I think we're good there. In section F under enforcement, are there any that, yeah, we, again, we have a few violations instead of infractions uh, under F, enforcement and penalties. Number three, we deleted in its entirety. Uh, we we checked with uh, the chief of police. We checked with uh, building commissioner, and there is no desire to create uh, or seek reimbursement for administrative costs. We do not have a table for that. We do not want a table for that. There are so many. There are so many calls by our by our public safety people that to call this out seeking reimbursement didn't make sense. Okay, thank you. 
uh, let's see. And again, we, we changed the word offense to violations. Uh, letter G, this is notification. So this is, this is where we begin to build a little bit more of the process um, for handling it. We, we currently have notification of property managers, those who, those who sign up to be notified get a notice. Uh, those who don't sign up to be notified in the, under the current process don't get notified of violations. So this is this is again the beginning of a, of a new process. So um, the request or the suggestion by GOL was that occupants be notified by posting, uh, that owners get uh, notified by certified mail. And instead of writing it in that manner, we combined it into one um, into one um, sentence saying, uh, let's see. I lost my place, a notification uh, that, so we added the sentence, compliance with this section may be attained by email, certified mail and or posting the notice on the property giving flexibility to the enforcement agencies rather than locking them into a specific one. Can I ask a question of Chief Ting on that section? Is there, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming this works for you. Is there one of those that doesn't work? Is there one that works better? Is there, should it just, would you rather have it just be one or do you, is that flexibility necessary? I, think no, my I, like worry here. I, okay. I, I like the flexibility simply for the reason that, um, you know, sometimes uh, some people like to play games and, and they'll try and find other ways to avoid getting notifications. So this gives us some additional options. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Uh, through number two, the violations. And then um, under 2B, we start with the use of the term enforcing authority rather than the town or uh, the inspection services. Uh, inspection services isn't deemed the appropriate entity in this in in all cases. So we we switched it around to enforcing agency. Excuse me, enforcing authority. So even though the inspection services is listed as one of the two, enforcement mm -hmm. options so they can still seek a meeting with with inspection services or does it yes okay they can they can they can they can seek a meeting with the appropriate enforcing authority and if it's if it's a zoning if it's a uh i know, see i see depending on you know noise uh not noise but but trash or or you know, health and safety violation, it goes to probably the building commissioner or inspection services. And if it's a noise um, complaint, it goes to uh, police department. So we didn't okay, want to, we you. did not want to specify. Okay, thank you. So throughout here, it's either the, it, the use of the word violation and then the use of the word enforcing authority. That's throughout all of G3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. G3, G3, blah, blah, blah. That looks like most of that section. I think that's it until I. Yeah, and I. So I uh, was, was raised by KP Law. And in this, the clause is that the, well, you can read it, the provisions are deemed severable. And the point that uh, CRC made, Mandy Joe had, had made this suggestion that it was not needed, that this section is in fact redundant with what we have in our general bylaws. So in fact, in section 1.1 general bylaw interpretive guidance, letter I, it states in our current bylaws, unless otherwise stated, if any section, subsection, paragraph, sentence, clause, or phrase of any bylaw in Article Three General Bylaws is declared unconstitutional or invalid for any reason. The remaining provisions of the bylaw shall not be invalidated. 
we felt that that pretty much covered this one as well. So we we elected to eliminate this paragraph I severability, deleted it in its entirety. Okay. All right, um, I'm gonna stop sharing. Pam, thank you for that rundown. It was really helpful to kind of walk through what CRC had, had responded to. I wanna give a moment, Chief Ting, do you have anything that you would like to add or um, share regarding this, this bylaw? No, I think it's well written. I think it's well thought out. And, um, you know, at first I wasn't sure how it would work because it, it kind of combines uh, inspection services onto one ticket. Um, but I think it's it's clearly delineated. And we have obviously a strong relationship with, with Rob Mora staff. So we'll be able to navigate it pretty clearly. And it, to be honest with you, it doesn't really change the way we operate that much with the exception of uh, repeat offenders. So this gives us uh, additional tools for that. So I'm I'm very happy with it. And it's consistent with all of your policies and procedures that you do now. It is. Great, that's great, thank you. Um, all right, any questions bef uh, for Chief Ting or Pam? And please, use your, Lynn, go ahead, I see your- At yeah, one no. point in the bylaw that we're still looking at, you use the, the word tenant exists. Is that just an oversight and it should say occupant? Say that again, please. I didn't the word it. tenant is at it it appears. Let me try to find it. Yeah, um, that would be great. Um, I just had it. Um it's oh wait a minute, I know where it is. Hold on. There's a in E, yeah. E1C. Yeah, it appears in. Persons liable. Uh, persons liable. Persons liable we to. Removed, we removed. We removed the the occupant line that was line A originally, so that yeah. should there should be no reference to tenant or occupant at this point. I don't see it. <clears throat> I don't see it there. So, uh, it maybe I looked at the version. wrong. Maybe I looked at the wrong version. You may be looking at it earlier. Yeah. yeah. The, the clean one doesn't have it. That that clarifies it because um, otherwise we didn't find it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other any other questions for either of our guests today? Um, okay, thank you so much, Chief Chang. I hope this is not the reason that you're still at work late. And um, yeah. Pam, thank you so much for tuning in on a, on a Thursday. You're welcome to stick around um, in case we've got other, I think Pam more so, but you're you're also free to go if you would like to leave. Yeah, thank ahead. you everyone. You just sit in the audience. Thanks. Yes, thank of course, I'll thanks. move you back to that. And, and I'd, like to, I'd like to express uh, appreciation to Chief Ting because the input was consistent and valuable and really helped us formulate something that works. We didn't want to just be doing something punitive. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. the collaboration very much so. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Thanks, Chief. Have Thank a good you night. for being Have here. Yeah. Can, I, can I just uh, sit in the audience? I'd love to. I'm gonna, yeah, I'll, I'll bump you over. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, okay, there we go. She's gonna rejoin as an attendee. There we go, okay, perfect. All right, folks, so um, now what we're gonna do, unless anyone has any um, opposition to it, I'm gonna be pulling up the clean version sent by CRC back to us, because that is what we are working with. But you have, as a reference point, the other documents that um, we used as well. Any questions about that? The only thing is we may have, to, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The only thing is we may have to go back and see what something was said before, particularly in that one where we want to leave Mass General Law in and cite what mm -hmm. it really means. This one. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. So okay. this is. Yes. Uh... Anna just froze. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> um, I'm going to ask 
Okay, she's back. Hang on one second. I'm sorry. Lynn, are you able to share without your internet going out? Because that seems to be I what's think so. messing let me, with my internet. Let me go in and try to find it. Sorry okay. about that. Every time I try to share my computer. I had it earlier. Tells me I'm unstable, which isn't a helpful yes, reminder. It does. Hold on one second. Um, any any comments or questions before we dig in? I'm planning to do this the same way that we typically do: clarity, consistency, actionability. Just kind of running through line by line. Um, unless there are any objections okay. to that. So, Is do you want the combined questions? original and CRC updates nuisance, or do you want? No, nope, I just want the CRC. It's like the KP uh, nine two three two. It's the 709 okay. as voted by CRC. Pat, what were you saying? Nothing. Okay. But I was going to say, if we don't have any questions, and we're, do we really need to go through it line by line again? I'm going to just, just say wondering. section by section. No, I think I'm going to do feels section better. by section. <laughs> Even, yeah, yeah. Not, not line by line. Sorry, I should have <laughs> clarified. I'm, I'm still right. not line sure one. I'm getting the right one. Okay. Uh, at the top, it should say clean 2024-709. Voted the, as voted by CRC? As voted by CRC. Okay, then I'm ready to put it up on the screen. Amazing, story. thank you. Thank you for doing that. Okay, is this the right one? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right, Lynn, would you like to um, make the changes as we say them or, yeah. I mean, accept? Okay, great. Um, otherwise, I'm happy to. Okay, so it sounds like section A is fine. Mm -hmm. um, section B, CRC was choosing to not define this and uh, that is in keeping with what the chief of police recommended. So I'm comfortable deleting this comment unless, other, unless anyone objects. I just need to figure out how to delete it. The little three dots in the corner of the- Ah, uh, thank like, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can delete that. Got it. Um, we can accept, I think, accept those formatting changes- uh, Later. Below. Yeah. They added that in, which is really helpful. I think we can delete that comment and accept the change. Hold on, I need to move you all so I can see the three dots. Uh, accept change. Great. That did. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. All right. Uh, section C, any issues? Pam just raised her hand. Oh, I'm going to, Pam, I'm going to allow you to talk one second. And then I have a question. All right, Pam, go ahead. Thanks. I I actually don't see uh, a definition in my version of occupant, unless we somehow. It's uh, right. Added you it look in at the screen. It's right there. Okay, my version doesn't have it for some reason. Huh. I wonder if maybe this suggestion got rejected at some point by accident. There's a because it was a here. No, that was that's to add a comment. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, mm. I'm. I think I'm comfortable with having it there, um, because we do, in fact, uh, we do, in fact, contact the occupant. It is used we, later. The, in, yeah, the version that we got from you, Pam, it, it did have that in there. I don't know if KP Law added it or you did, but the 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 one that I got back included it as a track change. Okay, let's let's leave it, but that that's unnerving. Um, okay. Um, all right, uh, the number changes are fine once we accept those for, and that wraps up section B, I believe. What's happening? Oh, Lynn, you're in the, not the offline version, that's why. You're still in the SharePoint version. Okay, I'll, I'll accept them later. I Thank think you. that's fine, but yeah, okay. 
Um, and in C, I don't know, this is the small formatting thing. I don't know why those numbers are italicized um, on the left. If you see one and two, go back up. Nope, just go back up. Yeah, I see them. Yeah, I don't know why they're italicized, but if we could make them honor italicized. Okay. But the italicized A's are okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why those are italicized either. I don't either. Okay. Uh, they're not, and I don't know why they're they're also not italicized in the downloaded version. I have. I'm not. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Not sure why. Once I download it, I'll see whether they're there. Okay, so we're gonna make sure nothing is italicized okay. uh, in the numbers. Okay. Um. Any issues with, where are we? We finished B. Any issues with C other than what we just discussed? Okay, moving on to D, nuisance property designation, clarity, consistency, actionability issues here. Uh, Pam, go ahead. Pam, you're unmuted, I think. Oh, I, I thought I, I had, didn't see the invitation. Um, <laughs> if you go to uh, the Mass General Laws, you were going to discuss, should we keep the, the references in or not? Oh, that's right. Thank you. Um, yeah, so if we go back up to disorderly conduct, um, Lynn, do you want me to just read it to you or do you want yes. to copy it over from that? Okay. It was uh, MGL with periods between chapter 272. Sorry. You're good. And then capital it says C H, uh, capital C, oh. lowercase h, period 272, comma, capital S, lowercase e c, period 53, period. So yep. the, yeah, the the issue is that that according to to KP law, uh, the actual MGL reference doesn't actually reference disorderly. Conduct. That was according to us, George. That was something we noticed in the last one. Um, so I think what Lynn had mentioned before was we could put in parentheses what the what the name of the law is, um, and that is. Uh, okay. It is titled Penalty for Certain Offenses. And it referenced disorderly persons or disturbers of the peace. And that's what Chief Ting was saying, disorderly conduct is. Okay. Um, and then B was uh, same formatting, MGL chapter, 138 and it's secs 148 did you say uh 138 sorry 38 thank you and it's sections 34 and 34 c okay thank you or do we say section 34 or or section 34 c it says and. Okay, thank you. And it, it's S-E-C-S, because -S. there's two of them. Yep, okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I think that was it from those Should ones. we say, I'm sorry, should we say as set forth in? No, in we, these? I, oh. I mean, one option would be to put the whole MGL in parentheses, and then that way it, you don't have to have the lead-in sentence, but in the consistency is mm -hmm. how it's done in I, in one here, right here. Uh, we have other sections where they just, I'm below in three. Um, yep, you're just, right. Yeah, so it's, yeah. So I should probably put a... Comma. comma just a, that's what they're doing apparently. yeah mm -hmm. okay does that meet yep. consistency yep. thank you okay um uh, 
All right, and then I don't think I, I think... can raise my hand, so I would need to ask. Oh yeah, if, go ahead. If we're going to D, is it because mm -hmm. they want us to put in nuisance bylaw property? I don't think that's correct. What if you click it? It's a it's a word suggestion, so um, they just. I, I think you can just ignore it. Yeah. Think they're it. they're just they, yeah ignore. It's okay. They wanted us to drop the A. Yeah. They don't know what they're talking about. All right. Um. So the E. I would accept that. I don't know why the one is crossed out. It's not. Andor is left in. No, 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 no. The one. E1, oh, I don't so either. I don't yeah, know. I don't I'll, know why. I'll, I'll make a note on that. Okay. Um, I'm a, I'm fine with the and or being added. I think that helps to clarify it. Yeah, I think this is all. Awesome. Yeah. Yep, I think these suggestions are good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, just wrapping up this part of this E section, is there anything that folks do not believe is clear, consistent, or actionable? This is where uh, tenant is still in here, Pam. So I think we- It is if, right if, there. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got questions on that, I think in this case- I think it- I think it makes sense. I think it holds because an owner would evict a tenant not necessarily an occupant. Like I think, well, Pat, do you have something more? It's a tenant. If if it's rented, the occupant is a tenant, and a tenant is an occupant. So I think it should be. Why don't we uh, say? Lynn has her hand raised. Oh, sorry. Go. I was I was pulling up our definition of occupant to confirm, and and Pat's Pat's absolutely yeah. right that that is how we defined it. So I think we could change that to occupant. Pam. Oh, sorry, Lynn, and then him. Lynn? I was going to suggest we say an occupant. In other words, to evict, it they could still be a rental if you say an occupant. And so I don't mm -hmm. want to use the word tenant here because it's not defined. Right. right. I agree. Okay. Uh, Pat agrees. Pam, do you have any thoughts on this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, you can. Um, I, I just w went back and looked at what I sent you uh, in the email and in our definitions, there was not the, the definition for occupant. I'm comfortable with it given how it's been used throughout and I think it plays a role. I don't know who added it and it made me worried that somehow our versions are getting mixed up. <laughs> so I'm comfortable with it, we'll leave it. Um, and and while, I'm, while I'm on speaker, um, Remind me the process of this. Um, does does CRC have to again accept all of the changes that you've suggested? No, no. no. It, from here it goes back to the council. Okay, and does it come back as a as a complete, clear, uh, unmarked up version? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So far, so good. Only this, I would have to. The the oh. reason the reason that we use tenant was obviously if you, if it's an owner occupied home that's a problem or causing issue, um, there is not going to be an eviction process happening. It was a it was sort of a protection of the. Um, let's see how does it say. Um, these are people liable uh, if they can't be they can't be um, economically liable if in fact they're in the process of, of evicting someone and and I think if you say evicting an occupant that probably still works the usual word would be tenant but but occupant mm -hmm. does work I think yes because the definition of occupant says 
a person with legal rights to it. Pam, to uh, respond to your question, the um, version that I got came from Paul and it said, attached is the CRC version of the nuisance property bylaw with comments from the town attorney. So I'm not sure who put oh, it in, but cool. I, that that's where mine came from. Is okay, it was so from I, CRC with comments. I never saw I never saw that final round from Paul and the and the town attorney. I think it's because GOL had requested the um, the, the attorney comments, and so we GOL requests the legal review, um, and so it comes to us once we have that. So I think that the attorney had been sent the CRC voted language and um, had added in the comments there. Great. I think that, okay. Um, so Lynn, I, you can accept those changes that you just, the occupant tenant swap, I think. You don't want me to leave these in because these are our, these are GOL's changes. Okay. In that case, I think we should highlight that occupant was added because CRC did not add that. Technically we did as, on recommendation from the town attorney. So if it's in this track change, it means we did. See, what's happening here is all of the track changes that came to us mm -hmm. have been, or we're accepting, the ones we're adding are in red. Yeah, but what, what Pam is saying is that the, the, the addition of the term occupant was something KP law added that CRC did not vote. So that's our addition now, basically. That that's where that addition has been made is on when this bylaw was underneath GOL. Does what that make sense? Do with this. Yeah, I think that's fine. I'll I can I, I can put it in red later. Okay. Yeah, that works. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone else in terms of that? Is yes. one okay? Thank you. Thank you for validating. All right. So we um, went, we made it through to we're an E F. So now we're in E enforcement. F, yes. Mm -hmm. Um I think this makes sense as a town attorney addition, and I think we should keep it. Yeah. But that was, a, so Lynn, I think in keeping with your, what you just said though, should we keep that as a track change? Because that was something that's- No, because we're accepting the track changes from- but that track change came from the town attorney. CRC oh, did not vote it. That's oh, what I'm trying to say. Because oh, we got oh. new town attorney comments. All right. Then I got to figure out how to put it back in. I think if you can control Z or edit undo. Control B. No, Z. 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 Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yep. I didn't know that. Oh, I love being able to teach things. All right. It's a handy one for people who, like me, who constantly have to undo things that they did wrong. All right. Um, okay. Uh, F. Back to F. Hold on. Oh, you're good. Thank you again for doing this. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, that on the first or second violation was a CRC ad. I think we can accept that. No. No? Okay. No. Thank you. It's, it so was. Pam, anything that's track changes on this would have been a town attorney comment? Is that what you're saying? And CRC did not see them. And so you're I did not see that. Um, and, and if I were to change it, I would say on the, he's just making a, a, a new sentence on the first and second violations. It's not either or, it's both. Good. Right. Okay. Yeah. So Okay. Should this also be third or sub and subsequent? Yeah. I think it says it after that. Yeah. So yeah, and change order. And. and all subsequent. Yeah. Yeah. And what? 
Well, it says, and all subsequent violations a little later. So I would say all there as well. But maybe maybe not. I don't know. Not important. Um, the number one in two C should be spelled out, not that. Number one in two C. Yeah, if more than one provisions. Yes. Provision, excuse me. Got it. Okay. Should this be spelled yeah. out five? Yes, because it's under 10. But 10 can stay as it is. Correct. That's the rule I always have known. That's, is that that's if it's the two one digits, I it's numbers. About. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's APA style. Mm. Um, okay. Same five should be spelled out in uh, 3A1. Top of the bottom page. Mm -hmm. So do we have to change within 10 days, within 14 days? No, because thought, they're two digits, and so two digits, it's okay oh. to have numbers. Oh, I all right. did. All right. I just learned something new. You learned two Thank things you. today. This is like, <laughs> this is great. What a day. Not bad for a 78-year-old. <laughs> so we, we I'm, do have a I'm confused. We do have a below, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it should be left in as the word six, right? Yeah, it yes. should be. They're just saying number words haven't been used, but they should have been used. So we're, we're doing it right. We're making it better. Or mm. consistent. I don't know about consistent, better. Consistent, not better. Right? We're not in, we don't make Consistency it. doesn't always mean better. You're right. I that's, am, you're right. You're right. That's a different call. Fair point. So Lynn, can you take out their comment? Because that is not what we're not going to. And then you can reject their change. Oops. So that's interesting um, th that this change was not actually um, deleted. Um, so I, again, that's it. Sounds like when CRC and Pam reject, they, oh. they deleted. It is, yeah. Let me just do this right again. Oh boy. Control X. Nope. No. Uh, control, control Z. Z. Yeah. So you want me to reject what? Uh, reject their change. Reject replacement. Yep, it was initially spelled out. They that was correct, and then the KP law folks changed it. Got it, right there. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, and then. I agree with what Pam said about if our bylaws generally have the severability clause that we do not need to put it in every single bylaw. Uh, so I would reject that um, what, suggestion. What, what was Mandy Joe's comment with this? Mandy Joe was saying what, what Pam shared was that we have our entire set of bylaws at the beginning says every single, basically every single bylaw has a severability clause if is, this is deemed unconstitutional and it applies to every bylaw in the town. So we don't need a severability clause in each individual bylaw because they are covered by that blanket statement. And, and my observation is that it sounds like CRC did in fact decide to delete this, but it never, it didn't get deleted. Yeah, and so Lynn, I would right now right click on your, um, I'd right click on that. And I would accept that deletion. Yeah. Yep. One okay. little more. No worries. <laughs> Got it. Okay. 
Um, all right. So with these changes, are there any other comments? Are we ready to take a vote and, and vote this clear, consistent, and actionable with the changes made today? Okay, no outright objections. Um, so, Link, can you scroll up to the top of the document just so I can see the title? I'm going to make a motion to find the um, proposed bylaw 3.2, proposed amended bylaw 3.26 nuisance property, clear, consistent, and actionable as edited by GOL on September 5th. As, re as reviewed by, thank you, as reviewed by GOL September 5th. Um, is there a second? Ryan, second. Thank you. I'm going to call the vote. Uh, Pat? Aye. Council Ryan? Aye. And Lynn? Aye. All right. It passes unanimously. Pam, uh, thank you, you so much. I am an I. Well, you have well. to say it. I am an I. No, 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 no. I meant that as like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot. Not that was not sniffy. Um, <laughs> I can't I, be sniffy. Even I'm though, not even though this was, was unanimous, I we don't put first readings on consensus. On consent. Yes. Right. Um, so Pam, thank you so much. I know this has been a long labor for CRC, and so please pass our gratitude along to the other members of CRC as well. Um, Lynn, thank I don't you. know when. Thank you, thank you. Lynn, I don't know when your plan is to put, I can't remember when you plan to put this on the agenda, um, it's but will you? It's on for Monday. Okay, oh, great, good. so I have to write okay. a report. The first reading. Um, all right, so I will write a report on this and um, Can that somebody says we tell found me it how I download this? Um, hang on one sec, so click off that for a second. Oh, save as, file. As, and then download a copy to your computer. Yep. Got it. Thank you. And hopefully can, that works. And, and hopefully this works and I can take it from there. Okay. Excellent. Thank and you. And I will send it off to Athena. I'll actually, I will send it to the full council tonight and then Athena will post it tomorrow. That's, okay. that's uh, the Pam? instruction she just gave us. Excellent. Pam, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Thank you. Um, will you, Lynn, need a report on this for the first reading also for Monday, which means I need to get it to you ASAP? Uh, it, was it in any earlier report? I'm sure, I'm sure it was, but there, it's, you know, it could have been last year for all I remember. I, I think it would be best to have a report. Okay. Because Thank it you. was referred back to you. So yes, the answer is yes. And yes, the answer is ASAP. And secondly, uh, would it be possible to um, to get a copy of this before it? Act well, I, I'll see it in the packet, right? It'll show markups or no markups. I I will send both one with markups and one clean. Okay, and then the last question I have is just process. Um, if I think when we sent it from CRC to GOL, we said this last clause needs to be looked at. We believe it does not need to be included. KP law needs to weigh in, and so that was the only that was the only um, nugget that we really wanted. We CRC felt was needed from KP law at that time, and it. I just I don't quite understand why CRC would not get um, some notification that the process you know that the document has been handed to KP law. And KP Law has come back with the following. It just seems very vacuous and disconnected. That's that's my general reaction, but um, I'm not upset about it. I'm just it just feels weird. And I made I made no note here about eliminating that. I'm I'm happy it it wasn't well. It was required to be removed by CRC. If that makes you feel any better. It was requested to be removed. Hi, folks. I apologize. My um, my internet kicked me off, um, so I'm going to join from my phone for a moment until I can reconnect on my computer. So Pam is wondering if he, she said that 
um, they wanted a, C a KP law opinion as to whether that paragraph we eliminated should in fact be eliminated. And we went ahead and eliminated it and made no note. Are you there, Anna? Yes, I'm here. Sorry, I was jumping from device to device. Um, so we can, I think we can ask the question. We have the text from old versions that we can add back in um, and explain the situation. I think the text is very boilerplate, so I'm not too worried about it in the sense of what it is. Right, so we can just leave it in as a KP law suggestion and um, we can strike it because we think it should be struck and leave it uh, X'd out and explain that it was a KP law suggestion. Does that work? Perfect. I'm not sure it was a KP law suggestion, was it? Yes, it yes, was. Yes, it was. Yeah, it okay. Was. Originally. So, so we need to now um, amend our vote or something because this is different than um, what we voted. Right? Yes. Okay. I, we can have a vote to reconsider, but let's not be so formal. Just let's. I'm just going to say that we're going to do a vote to accept this amended version as the clear, consistent, and actionable um, copy of the nuisance property bylaw 3.26. And I will go through the full process again. So can I have a second? To... I'll, second, I'll second again. Thank you. Um, all right, calling vote, Councilor Ryan. Aye. Pat. Aye. I am an aye, and Lynn. Aye. Okay, no more changes. Um, all right, thank you all. Pam, thank you, and I apologize that my internet just booted me. I don't know why. Um, we are good to go for Monday. I will include this in my GOL report that I'm going to write tonight. And I will send this out to you within the next five, 10 minutes. Thank you. Pam? Thank you, everyone. I really appreciated the, the thought and care on this. And thanks especially to Pat for her two years <laughs> working with us on this. <laughs> She's going to Pam, celebrate I'll... by throwing a rowdy party and becoming a nuisance property. Pam, Thank I'll you. also send you a copy tonight. Thank you. Okay. I'm out of here. All right, thanks, Cam. Um, all right, folks, nicely done. So one uh, other order of business that I wanted to talk about, our next meeting is set to be September 19th, which is the block party. Um, since I have been on the council, I have had a meeting the night of the block party. And uh, so, you know, this is a little bit selfish, but also, we're talking about how council can best engage the block party and the best way for us to do that is starting off with us being able to be there. Um, so I wanted to check in with you all about what's coming up on our agendas, as well as basically to determine whether we wanna cancel that meeting outright or postpone it. And if we postpone it, does the following week um, or does the week of the, hang on, I lost my calendar for a second. Did it do? Yes, does the following week work for folks? So first off, in terms of what's coming up for us, GOL does have a couple things that have been on the back burner that we will be taking up, um, and that's not including any other bylaws that come through from the council. The first is the uh, timeline for the town manager evaluation. Lynn Wood will, as council president, will be sending out a copy of the proposed timeline um, similar to past years. We had initially been planning on looking at the full process for the town manager evaluation. Um, and I know everybody did their homework on that. We can still talk about that and we should, but uh, other things took precedent over that particular item. And so we are at the point where we now need to talk about the timeline. Um, in addition to the time, oh, sorry, go ahead, Lynn. The problem is the timeline is supposed to go to the council on the 23rd. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, when we discuss this in agenda review, um, Athena said she doesn't recall that we've ever had to go to GOL for recommendation of the timeline. So uh, she felt it could still go to the council on the 23rd. Yeah. What, 
the whole thing was whether we were going to realign it with the budget process and stuff. Um, so I'm a bit confused. And that's what we started to do when we were looking at Chatham and all these other places. Yeah. So I think that some things have just gotten mushed in here. So um, it could I don't know what to say be, beyond that. I mean, it could be, to be honest with you, it could be that we were we just don't have the runway to change it for this cycle and we're proposing it for next year. Um, and that gives people time to realign the rest of the processes that would have to realign. So we could still move forward with suggesting changes to the to the process, but have it not be for this this cycle. I think that makes sense. Oh, you know, it's just that it got bumped. I know. Now in a certain kind of way, no, no shame, no blame. I am not doing that. It's getting bumped again. Uh, my concern is, will it be bumped yeah. again? And, I think that's a, uh, no, I think and, that's a and I don't think I don't think we can do a good job right now. I think that we're correct, and let's leave it the way it's been. So the timeline, you know. the timeline goes to the council without our um, uh, comment. It's just which is fine by me. But in the meantime, yeah. we are going to do what we can to um, proceed with this and for the next iteration. Okay. We really need to. And realistic. Well, we, yeah. Yeah, I, I think we really need to. And to be honest with you, even I, I don't know how realistic the initial timeline was, given that we were still discussing our goals from the last. We are still discussing our goals. So I think we just need to be a little bit more realistic and um, talking about <laughs> proposing changes for the next for the next cycle. So yeah, and yes, as counselors, the whole council needs to be more realistic about goals. Yeah. Yes. And what are we really talking about when we're setting a goal? And let me which that is going to be on our plate very, very yes. soon. Because yes. that does come to GOL. So mm -hmm. that I would like to kind of start having folks think about. And all of that research that we did does tie into the recommendations that GOL makes for the goals. So um, it's not just the timeline. It's, right. it's honestly that ties in more so than anything else. So we will be having that discussion, but that doesn't need to go to the council on the 23rd. That I think Lynn typically goes to the council in in December. So we, it was on my timeline to start talking about that in late September, early October. Um, and I'd like to keep to that if, if we can. So what else is on your list of to do's? The other big to do that we haven't even touched yet is the legislative process guide. Um, and we need to, at some point, talk about that. It's not a pressing item, but it was a carryover item um, that that is on GOL's plate. Um, it could be great to bring that up. And what GOL is doing is deciding what the council wants to do with this document. We are not charged with enacting it. We are not, it's, it's nothing like that. It's basically, this was put forward by a former member of the council. TSO discussed it and decided that it really was um, more about council process and therefore should come to GOL. So we as GOL are deciding, is this something that is enacted as a rule? Is this something that is enacted as a recommendation or a best practice? We're basically deciding what do we do with this? Um, and yeah, so it is It is on our list to provide a report and recommendation back to the council. Has Lynn? that already come to us? Okay. Have I, I missed it somehow? That we cancel the, I'm sorry, Pat? Go ahead, no, it's fine. I suggest we cancel the meeting on the night of the, of the party. Mm -hmm. And that in October, we focus on that that process. So I'm that fine. in November we and, and and begin discussion of the goals. I'm fine with that. My question, my only hesitation is if folks can think of and and I guess Lynn and and other everybody here is on different committees, which is really helpful. Um, I just am trying to anticipate what else is going to be coming forward to us, possibly in the next month. Let um, me look at I, that and tell you if I can see anything. Okay, because I don't want to end up in another scenario where we're kicking something off. Um, okay, so let me just mention. Is it possible for us to set a meeting for the 26th, and then if we don't need it because nothing's come up, cancel it? 
that was the my thought was to have a meeting to hold a meeting for the 26th if folks were um available that day uh and i don't need to fill the 26th with the legislative process guide it's not an urgent matter but lynn if, unless there's something that you think is going to get referred to gol at, directly at the next meeting i think we could i'm cancel. looking at the agenda and i do not see anything and then I'm looking at the agenda for September 20, the, the items that are on for September 23rd. And, and the only one would be that the council says, we want GOL to look at this evaluation process. I don't know what they would want us to look at, but nevertheless. Okay. So the only thing that we would be doing on the, on the 26th is, um, is possibly the legislative process guide. Um, I'm comfortable canceling. Our next meeting would be October 3rd. Right. Does anyone have I'm thoughts? Sure that. Okay. George or Lynn, what do you think? Do you think we should add a meeting or reschedule the meeting to dig into the process guide or cancel it? George, will you even be here? That's why I'm staying quiet. I I um I will be gone the uh, last week of September and the first two okay. weeks of, of October. That first you okay. you're missing it. You'd miss book it, either one, so you're uh, missing the third also. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. 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 So uh, Lynn, let's. I think I think Pat's suggestion was a good one. Let's schedule okay. it on unless something on case something gets thrown at us. And um, let's cancel it if we don't need it. And then okay. like October 26th or September 26th? No, September 26th. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I thought we were saying we don't need it, but I don't care. I will come. <laughs> if we need All right. It. So um, I'm what gonna I'm going to say, calendar. it is not, I was going to say, put it in your calendar, but um, I will plan on me emailing you if it's going to happen. Um, because it doesn't look like anything's going to be sent our way. Ex yeah, um, that's yeah, it, that's why. I'm writing to well if needed. Um, so Athena, watching this recording, don't schedule anything right now. Uh, I am going to, <laughs> unless I send you an agenda, do not schedule anything. Okay. Um, what I will say though is, if folks want to look back at the old GOL carryover memo to um, I don't know if the legislative process guide was attached. It would be beneficial if folks could take some time and look through that. Given the link it, between our this meeting and our next meeting, um, and knowing that that is something we will need to take up at some point, it is a hefty document. Um, and so I recommend folks, I'm giving you a month to read it. Um, I'm not saying it will, I, I'm not promising it'll be on our next agenda but we will need to talk about it at some point so what if you've got a month to, lots of reading. what is it attached to anna i was trying to remember if it was attached to the gol carryover memo but pat you wrote that so i think that if right i don't remember I, a that i don't document know. being attached but i have it's I in the tso no, no 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 i it, it was in the tso carryover and that's where TSO it got switched carryover. over so um the tso carryover memo um i believe is where that was and uh it was then sent to gol okay Lynn? i'd like to request that the chair of gol i find both documents and email them to the full committee am i allowed to do that without placing them in the packet mm -hmm. if we... you're not okay. asking us to uh, to debate you're just providing us with the information. oh great oh yeah okay then i'll do that i was trying to figure out how to offer that without oh, getting you're good. okay you're good. i'll do that um, no problem. I will, I'll make sure to do that. All right. Any other questions before we adjourn? And are people going to fight me on the motion and vote to adjourn again tonight? I will not I have move it. To adjourn. Let's, see what, let's see what happens. <laughs> All right. Let's Lynn made the motion. Me. I'm going to second it. And I'm going to call the vote. Pat. You made your Abstain. own motion. Did she second it? No, Lynn, Lynn motioned it. And I, oh, I'm sorry. I, I seconded it. I want to be clear on the procedure. Pay attention, Ryan. All right. Yeah. Uh, Pat abstains. Lynn. Aye. Thank you. I am an I and George. 
I don't know if we can stay. If we, I don't know if we can adjourn. If you abstain, please. Like, I vote aye. I vote aye. All right. Thank, thank you all. You, we George. we are adjourned <laughs> at seven fifty p.m. Have Thanks, a lovely Carol. evening, everyone. Yeah. You too. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye -bye. <laughs>